of Kentucky and a new Hello, this is Debbie Crawford, and we are here with Ellie Troutman, and she's the lady that has graciously offered to rescue some horses from Trimble County. Ellie, how's it going this morning? Well, it's busy this morning, as you can see, so uh, this is a, a lot of work, and it's a round-the-clock, 24-hour process, as, as you well know. The horses are much livelier today, but there's one thing we need to make sure people know. Even though in Kentucky there are some laws out there protecting animals, we need more. This is a misdemeanor offense uh, and the only felony conviction on the books for Kentucky is dog fighting. So, so there is no laws, there's nothing helping. In this instance, uh, it was misreported that she would get a year for every count, which is 97 counts. That is incorrect. It's a year total, a $500 fine, um, and be able to acquire animals within two years. So that's where the legislation is at a screeching halt. We need to work on the legislation and Absolutely. get some things changed. Absolutely. And, and it is capable. I mean, there are capable people in the legislation that could do this, and uh, repeatedly they've turned their back. We saw this a few years ago in Woodford County uh, with, with a, a very similar situation to this and uh, no legislation. And when, when they do get the bills written, somebody attaches something that absolutely we all know won't pass, and uh, it all dies. It never gets legs. So, you know, that's my reach out is to uh, remember your elected officials uh, and, and we can all change that. So we're going to, as a group, we're going to come down and, and really work on that and find out who the problems are on the state level. Well, now, now we can, as just regular citizens, we can contact our legislators, whether Absolutely. it's congressmen or senators or whatever, and tell them what we want to see happen. So that's something I think... Start, start with your representative. Start with empower. your local. Absolutely. Start with your county. Find out what's going on. Because some county laws are better than, believe it, some of our state laws. So, How many of the horses are actually pregnant that were rescued? Uh, it, it's still undetermined, but three confirmed. A three. few of them could not be checked because of their condition. Oh, goodness. I, you all really need to see how these horses are doing today. They are so tiny. Some of them just, there's more hair than there is in meat. So you just need to, you need to watch out for your neighbors and your animals close to you. If, if you know this is going on and you're scared to come forward, you know, animal control is a great resource, but there's other, uh, also other uh, humane society groups, rescues, and it usually is a collective group. If you see one horse that's thin, that could be an old horse. That could be a horse that right. is, is failing in its years and no matter what you do, uh, it's not gonna, gonna thrive. It, and, if you see multiple horses, and you know, for big farms, no trucks coming in and out with feed or grain, uh, no farrier coming in, no vet coming in, those are sure signs on the bigger farms. Um, but one, one thin horse, that, that may be a circumstance. Um, and even if someone deems themselves a rescue, in a short order, a horse can get turned around. Yes. And we can prove that here today. So, you know, ask some questions. There were neighbors, there, there was a dead horse laying 50, 50 yards from the neighbor's backyard, there's no way they didn't know. And so some people had to have known. And everybody's afraid of getting involved and fearful. Call, call the, the animal control is your best resource. Calling the sheriff, they're dealing with, with a lot of other things. So it, you know, people will say, well, I called the police three times. Well, the police are out doing some other uh, equally important jobs, but maybe cannot follow up. Animal control is your go-to. Now, if animal control doesn't respond, there, there's other resources like the Humane Society and, Absolutely. and other things. So Absolutely. Don't, don't stop with one phone call. If, if you don't get a response, call somebody else and right. try to make sure somebody comes exactly. and checks. Um, is there anything we need to tell people that maybe they don't know yet that we haven't covered? I don't, it's an ongoing investigation is. is what I keep saying. That's my go-to phrase. Uh, yeah. Can't speak a lot to what will happen. Uh, there is a hearing coming up. Right. We'll know where this goes uh, beyond the hearing. Personally, and I've said this before, um, I, I have to put her, uh, anything personal aside, and my job is right here with the horses and advocating yes. for the horses. Yes. And the horses, you know, and we'll just say that the horses won't be available for quite some time due to being evidence in the case. Right. I know a lot of people are asking that question, when and how they can get horses. I know people know some of the horses. It's a small county, uh, small area. So uh, we just put all that on hold for right now. Uh, they're not out of the woods yet.
they are still very fragile as you can tell Debbie yes. they're still very fragile some of them and um, they're all degrees this has been going on for some time so uh, you have horses that were easier keepers we call them kind of air plants they could live on nothing uh, and, and we have horses that couldn't survive without having a daily dose of hay and grain so um, it's been a, a long process this has been going on for a while and this doesn't happen overnight yeah, there's some of the horses here that they still can't eat grain. Their system's not back up and running well enough to even eat grain. So they're still on a very small diet of hay and they have to build that up. So it's... They're, they're eating kind of like babies when you get a new baby. So about every two hours, these horses get a fresh flake of uh, really green grass hay. The hay and water and salt are the most important. So the horses spent a week simply with the necessities. That's truly what a horse needs. A horse in the wild would never receive grain. He'd find a water source and he'd have ample grazing. Yes. So what we're doing is re reverting these horses back to a more primitive lifestyle, which is a constant hay. So it's that constant forging is what they call it. And then unlimited water, um, whatever they want to drink. And we're able to monitor that. We watch that in the water intake uh, and the salt. That's something they would pick up in the ground. And so any of the other things are things that we humans think they need, which is the oats and the grain and the barley and all of those, which we will introduce that. Well, there are really a few of them are just a couple days away from starting a very small regiment. But what happens is um, where the stoppers become. So we get through the first night, the horses get here, uh, nobody dies. Thank, thank goodness, you right. know, for that. They start on their hay. What, what that does is it's like starting up an old system, whether it's your air conditioner or your heater that hasn't run. So uh, it starts very slowly, it's a little rough, but inside we don't know what's going on in the mechanism. So a horse, especially as thin as some of the ones we're gonna show you, they can be ulcerated. So their stomachs or their intestine areas full of ulcers. Uh, worse yet, because the heart's a muscle, uh, we get murmurs. The horse will um, devour itself from the inside out. So what you don't see is the condition of the kidneys, the digestive system, the stomach that's ulcerated. You see weeks, months later, the outward condition of the horse. So the second problem with this group of horses is no maintenance. So these horses have not been dewormed. There's a, a significant parasite problem that we're up against, I'm sure. Uh, probably some of the horses that uh, were killed out there that died, um, people would want to say, well, someone said they had diseases. They did not have diseases. They had parasites and parasites will kill its host eventually it will take over so we would assume um, that that's a pair you know the parasite problem that did besides starving obviously secondary is a parasite so what happens is when you begin to introduce the feed um, the parasites have only been living on the horse now the parasites have food and everything begins to move so you have to be very careful in moving and killing the parasites. So uh, people want to say, well, just give them some dewormer oh, and, no. and let it go. And that's that is, again, uh, you're signing their death warrant because a dewormer is a form of poison. So with this ulcerated gut and deworming a poison, you're introducing this throughout the horse's system. So what we will do is you'll start with a half dose, low dose of dewormer, and you'll send out the worms that are easily uh, passed through. Not that anybody wants to talk about all this gross worm stuff, but, but what happens important. is then process. there's a group of parasites that are embedded. And that would be, and we'll show you some signs of that. We already know that without looking at anything else. So the other important part is the output. So we're putting all the things into the body. We also get the luxury of checking out what's coming out the other end. So we're looking for urine um, and looking at what the consistency of that is um, and, and the feces itself. And so for two days or three days, there was almost none. So as the stall guys are gonna tell you, uh, there's a lot more now. So as they begin to work and the bodies begin to work, it's going to produce more. Um, just like you saw earlier, the horses are itchy this morning. It's a little warm, so the hair coat is being stimulated. Some of these horses are missing their hair. They should have had a much more significant hair coat throughout the winter. It's not time for them to shed. Uh, goes by the length of the day right. so the day certainly isn't uh, it's, way too short. it's too short to be shucking your hair right. even if it's 70 degrees on Sunday so those are the things um, just like their hooves 
we'll have to really take precautions. So we'll begin conditioning their hooves uh, from the outside first, right. and then we'll add a supplement for that because what will happen is it will break off. It's just like your nails. So you'll see some of the horses missing their manes and tails. That would be other horses have eaten those. That's a source of protein. So they're they're going to try to survive, and eventually at the end of the the time period, they won't survive. There won't be enough. So whether it be tree bark, horse hair, uh, we have a horse that's mouth is so damaged from eating rocks, trying to eat rocks. And those are the things that really break our heart. You, you, people go, well, does this ever bother you? Well, of course it bothers well, us. Yes. We wouldn't be human if it didn't bother us. But we begin to see that this is an epidemic for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, financially, people lose jobs, lose things. People collect too many. It's very easy uh, in this day and age. There's a lot of horses that are available at almost no money people give them away and it makes it easy for someone like this to simply collect them 33 horses is way too much money uh, for a single person a single income with ch with children to be able to try to maintain it's it's not a good thing at all mm -hmm. none of this is I've, we have some horses here that we've seen that uh, one can barely stand up and she's had these horses what almost a week now we've had or, them a week had them a week now and it's still it can barely stand up so um, we just think it's wonderful what you're doing here. Thank you. And That's we appreciate great. you getting the word out. It's very important that accurate reporting of these things, accurate media, you know, our concerns are the legislation. Our concerns are that people believe she's going to get 100 years in jail for this. That's simply not going to happen. And people can be upset and protest and, and do things, but it really starts with action. It starts with, with contacting, well, the Humane Society. Why aren't we legislating right. for this? Uh, Kentucky is number 50 in humane laws we are the worst we are the biggest and the best with with the great races and the great things absolutely the worst in our laws and and that's the tragic part of this it's a yin and a yang and that's the worst part and it has to be stopped and because people are unable to do this that, you know. that's that's why we're saying it comes with a phone call if it does to make a difference you need to call your legislator local ones state representatives wherever you can make a phone call and ask them to change the way the laws are made absolutely this, so. absolutely uh, because it'll just keep happening it, it will it, it's not going to stop it didn't stop four years ago with woodford um and jasper county there's been several uh, people can name them off and um it won't stop because it there's no bite to this right. uh you know people should lose their property for this and if you're leasing a property that person should lose you know so people keep an eye on you know if you lease your right. property to someone you should go out and see what's going on so well now, as far as the horses go with feed and grain and all that, are you still taking donations we, for that? We are still allowing uh, the donations to come in. We've had some just fabulous people uh, that have stepped up and corporations, so we're very proud of our vendors. Uh, we do have a, a regular horse operation and, and uh, this isn't what we do full time. We're actually, uh, you know, we have our own training operation here as well. So yes, uh, they can do that through PayPal and they can also stop by any stockyards bank and to Windy Meadows Equestrian Center or they can mail a check. It's fine that's the greatest help right now because these horses are on such a specific diet people just stopping by with a random bag of feed um, does not help us at all no you and have to have specific stuff for the horse that is correct we are on a specific a regular and we are asking for those specific things from our vendors that are helping um, so th the biggest help is the legislation uh, we appreciate all the people that can do nothing more than prayers and to be able to um, not let this happen again. You know, I think that that's the takeaway from it. And yes. it will, it will. Trust me, this is already happening right now as you and I are speaking and there's someone out there that needs to reach out. People had reached out to this person. That's another rumor we want to uh, just absolutely wipe out and, and it's documented. They may not have known the condition, but with uh, some of her posts and depression and different things that she spoke of, people did reach out. Anything I can do, they knew she had horses, if we can help feed, and she turned them all down. So those are misconceptions I want to get out there for people who are defending and so forth, is that there was lots of help and could have been, you know, um, that's the thing. People will help, they need to be asked sometimes, and that's okay. And we are very grateful for all the people that have donated, and all the, the really great media coverage, and not for ourselves, but the horses. These horses have no voice, um, yes. they, they can't speak out, they're not gonna go testify, it'll only be their condition, um, and and we're up against the laws, so. Well, I, as we said before, the biggest help you can be is call legislators. And then if you want to help out with the horses, bring, you know, go to the bank, Stockyards Bank, or do the PayPal, PayPal. that she has, mm -hmm. and you can send money to help with the horses also. But please, 
don't come by the farm. They are very, very busy. She doesn't have time to give you a tour. And the horses can't be around a lot of people because they're so weak that they're gonna catch. That, that is, you're exactly right. The, the deal is the horses aren't sick, right. they're vulnerable. Yes. And they're susceptible. So if you come off the track or you come out of your pasture and you may not think you have anything, could be a simple common cold, could be a simple flu that goes through that a vaccinated horse will just, it'll just like water off a duck's back, will right. never make that horse sick. But you bring it here and it becomes deadly. Yes. They'll die from that. And that's what we can't get across to people. When we say they're in quarantine, it's not because they're sick. They right. have the potential to take up anything that you bring in uh, and and we wholeheartedly, and people still want to do it, don't come by. The gates are locked, security's on duty, right. the signs are posted, you will be treated as a trespasser. And we hate to be that, that uh, but that's strict to about the horses. it, but people it's, are still doing it. Yes, so what we need right. to do, um, and I know, I, I feel like people think their, their uh, intentions are terrific. Uh, but really, it it's, makes it more complicated. And like you said, we, we are in the middle of a court. You know, this is going to go to court. This yes. is going to be, these are evidence in a case. Um, so there's a lot to it that I don't think people understand. Some of these horses belong to other people. Uh, we're trying to sift out fact from fiction. We're helping to um, get all the information and documentation that we can for the court so that everything is, is really presented the way it should be. So any of the other stuff is really just a waste of our time. We know the horses' names, we, we know who they are, and I know everybody wants to, to help with that. Send me an email, and when I get to it, I'll get to it. So uh, yes, we really, and we do really appreciate and thank you again for doing this, that um, it's an education, and you have to educate yourself. That, that's our goal, is to educate people as to what's out there and what's not out there and what we need to do. Right. You know, and like we keep saying, make a phone call to your legislators. That's the biggest help you can be right now. You have representatives in your area. Those calls can go right to their office and yes. keep leaving a message and, and keeps it and not harassing, not in a mean way. We don't no. want, we don't want any, we're very peaceful people and we're, we just want to make sure the horses and the laws change and the people have to, she needs mental help. Um, she needs to be punished as well. Um, but I take on this part of it and, and we'll leave the rest up to the authorities and uh, they can only do with the tools they have to work with. That's right. And yeah. so being mad at uh, animal control or a prosecutor or a sheriff's deputy does you no good because they're simply, simply upholding the laws that are in place. So, so we just need to make sure there's more in place. Correct. To and make there's it teeth easy. to it. That, yeah. that it hurts somewhere, the pocketbook or somewhere. So Wow. Well we really appreciate you being here with us today, Ellie. Thanks for and taking the time. This appreciate is wonderful it. what you're doing. So you got it. thank you again. Make sure that uh, if you do want to help that you um, check out the PayPal or the Stockyards Bank. And then also please don't come by so you don't make the horses sick. And uh, send her an email if you'd like to. So this is Debbie Crawford. Thanks for watching.